Hello, here's the next video in a series I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. In this video, we're going to derive the joint PDF of order statistics. And we're going to start simple, a sample size of two, and then derive the joint distribution of the order statistic, and then three, and then a pattern will emerge and we can do it for a sample size of n. So let's start out with uh, x1 and x2 be continuous IAD random variables with some distribution function f. And we're going to let y1 and y2 be the first and second order statistics of this sample. And that means it's the smallest of those two and that's the largest of those two. Um, it, it should be noted that 1 and 2 are often denoted by 1 and then in parentheses x and in parentheses 1 and uh, x and in parentheses 2 uh, respectively. And so that this one is no, usually meant for the smallest, you know, it's the first order statistic. This would be the second order, the, the small, second smallest, which in our case, since it's 2, it's also the max. Um, and we want to find the joint uh, PDF of Y1 and Y2. <clears throat> so now let's look at a transformation of here what's happening. So Y1 always has to be less than Y2. So we that's this region here. So if we pick a value, Y1 is less than the value of Y2. So it's this whole region. So everything in here is mapped to this value. Okay. Um, so let's look at a quick example. Let's look at this point and X1 is sort of big and X2 is small. So that means X2 is mapped to Y1 and X1 is mapped to Y2 and specifically is mapped to that point. But if we would have chosen this point where X1 is sort of small and X2 is big, then X1 is mapped to there and X2 is mapped to that one and it's mapped to that point also. So this is a function going this way, but if we pick a value in our region here, it could be mapped to more than one. So it's not a one-to-one -one function. So some of the goal that we need to do is to separate this, which creates little one regions that are one-to-one, -one, that function is. And the region is this value here, which is x1 equal x2. We're going to call it region 3. Okay, but everything in this region is where x1 is smaller than x2, and this, all of this is mapped in a one-to-one -one fashion over here. So every point here, like that point, is uniquely mapped to this point in this region. And then if we also look at this region here, this is where s2 is smaller than s1, and everything over here is uniquely mapped to a value here and back. So this value would be mapped to that point in this region, and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So what that tells us is that uh, for every point here, there's actually two points over here that are mapped to it. So to find this probability, we need to find the probability of this happening, and the probability of that happening and add them together and then that's the probability that this point happens y1 and y2 equal that now this region here is a line and so the probability that x1 equals x2 in the continuous case is zero so this is a wherever it's mapped adds probability zero so we can in a sense ignore it and only focus on these two regions here so um, let's let's do that. And so region uh, S12, that's this one, where 1 is smaller than 2, that means uh, Y1 is X1 and Y2 is Y2. And then to back solve for X, we get X1 is Y1 and X2 is Y2. The Jacobian of this transformation is, uh, is 1. Now if we look at S2, which is this region, that says 2 is less than 1. So x2 is mapped to y1 and x1 is mapped to y2. And then when you back solve, you get x1 is y2 and x2 is y1. The Jacobian would be minus 1. Now, since x1 and x2, that's over here, they're IID, so they're independent. So their joint distribution is actually the product of the two. So we can break them up into pieces. 
And here this is emphasizing the probability of region 3, S3. That's the probability that X1 equals X2 is 0. So wherever that gets mapped here, um, which is this line, has probability 0. So we're going to ignore it. So now, once we have the mappings in our one-to-one -one regions, we can easily find the joint distribution of them. Okay, so the joint distribution is, is f of x, so this is x1, x2, um, but we plug in our back transformation of y1 and y2, and times the Jacobian, this is all over region S1, S2, you know, S1, 2, and then this is over region S2, 1. And notice that the Y2 goes first and Y1 goes second. Um, and that's because when we back solved, um, X1 is Y2, so we gotta plug that in for the X1 component, and X2 is Y1, so we plug that in here. Now the absolute value of these Jacobians is both one, so you can uh, sort of ignore it. And since these are independent components, you can break them up into the product of these. And then since the, you know, the product is commutative and associative, that, that it doesn't matter the order, you can really say this is two times each of those. And well, that's it. This is the, the joint uh, this is PDF for Y1 and Y2 and and under this region here. So now let's do it for uh, a sample size of three. So we're going to let X1, 2, 3 be continuous IID random variables and find the joint uh, PDF for order statistics 1, 2, and 3. Um, and so we have a region here. So this is the region the R3 space for 1, 2, and 3, you know, X1, 2, and 3, and everything in here is mapped into a specific region in here. And I started to draw a picture of, attempt to draw a picture of what's going on, but then I stopped because it was quickly getting, you know, clouded. So if this is Y1 and Y2, and we look at this region here, which is the Y1 equal Y2 line, then we have to be in this in this region here. So this this is like a a plane that goes straight down like this. And then if we look and and um, uh, we have to be on this side of it. And so this line here um, actually cuts sort of at a diagonal. This is the y two equal y three, and um, we have to be above this plane here. And then and then the y1 and 2 equals the you know this that's another plane that cuts through, you know, at this angle. So those three planes create a, a slice up here, you know, that has volume. So everything in here is mapped to this region. And you can imagine that there this is not one to one. Because, the, you know, there's six different ways we can have, we can pick an X. We can say, you know, this is smaller than this, than this, or this, than that, than this. And so uh, multiple values will be mapped to the same point. So how do we create little regions here? And that's what we're going to try to do next, in the next uh, page, is we're going to split this into six regions. Because there's six different ways. You can, three ways to choose the first component, which is smallest, and then two for the second and one for the third. So it's three factorial. And the mapping, I'm just going to put it up here. Um, so this is S123. That's, so it says X1 is smaller than X2, which is smaller than X3. So the mapping is this. And then to back solve for the X, you get this. So region two, which is S132, that says one is smallest, then three, then two, and you back solve and you get this. And you do that for each of the six unique regions. These cre this creates a one-to-one -one mapping into that Y123 space, you know, that little cone that goes, you know, up and diagonal. And then uh, here, since we have these transformations, we can find the Jacobian of each of these transformations which then we get this, so it's one, negative one, you know, 
now the um, you know so when we pick up when we find this joint PDF so why one two three there it actually maps back to six different points in our three space you, you know the X one two three world so we have to find the the each one of these the probability of each one of these because those are mapped to that specific point here and so it's this distribution so that's the x vector so it's one two three and then um so this is region one uh two three so we have to put in you know these values and then we will do it for one three two so then we put in one three two because that's where the x's are mapped back to um, now the absolute value of each of these Jacobians is one so I left it off and that's mainly to save space on my page and but we have to do that for each of the, the regions well these are independent so this is the product of of f of y1 y2 and y3 it's and this same way here this is a product of y1 y3 y2 and so you have six different uh, numbers but they're the same number and so we can write that as six or three factorial times the product of these individual uh, densities and that y1 is less than y2 which is less than three and that's it so this is the density for a sample of size three and, and it's a joint distribution now to be uh to expand this um, if we have a sample size of n and, and they're continuous IED random variables and we want to find the joint distribution of the order statistics y1 through yn then it's this it's n factorial times the individual products with the y you know one or y you know yn put back into the density for f or x so and maybe i should write that so this is under x and this is under the y vector and this these are x vectors so anyway so that's all i have for today hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye